Hello, today I'm going to walk you through using Cora Lite. So if you are familiar with Cora SEO software, then most of this is going to be very familiar to you. Uh, if you're new to Cora, uh, there are a few things you need to know. First of all, uh, we don't search using the browser. That's a mistake and it'll wreck the report. Uh, Cora is automating a lot of different features, so we want to make sure that we only search through the toolbar. So that's step one. Uh, if you're a first-time user, remember to set your serial number and output directory in the settings. Those are vital settings. And we also recommend that you get a free TextRaiser account for your NLP entities. Uh, it's a very important feature. The software will run without it, but again, it's a free account, so you might as well set up that API. Um, with that, uh, the way it works is there are two modes, track domain and all results. Uh, we're going to start in track domain mode. What this does is this is going to get uh, recommendations for a single uh, URL on a single domain that we're trying to rank. So if you're trying to fix one page on a site, this is the mode to get the recommendations for that page. All results is going to create a report for every search result for a keyword. So if you're doing serious competitive analysis or if you're doing uh, outreach to find new clients, all results is the mode you want. Uh, next, we have the desktop or mobile index for searching. Uh, you can localize to a country. You can be near a city or state. You can specify a language uh, context. And then there's your search terms. So I can put in DUI Lawyer Los Angeles and get the global search for a local term. And what we see here is we have these columns of checkboxes, the ranking Google, and then the websites we found in the search results. It excludes things like knowledge, pain, uh, map pack, ads, things of that nature. All we're harvesting here are the organic web results. And so what you typically want to do is to find your track domain. So you see this track column. Only one of these can be checked at a time. And down here, we found our track website here. If I click another one, it unchecks the one we have checked. So only one track site can be uh, done at a time. Up at the top, we have uh, our competitors. And by default, it automatically gets page one. But we may feel that we don't compete with Yelp, and Yelp's website might be skewing the recommendations for our tuning, so we can uncheck it. So now Yelp won't be considered when telling us how to tune our factors. And, you know, we may want to replace it, that way we still have 10. Um, and that's fine too, you can have any number of uh, competitors. Uh, but if you get too many, the data gets hard to use. So try to limit it to your top competitors. Uh, 10 is a great number. <clears throat> All right, next uh, we have some customization. So for branding, uh, there's a little bit of documentation here uh, letting you know that you can brand and that there are wild cards you can use in your templating. You can customize the head tag, which is typically where you have your script includes, your styles, your meta tags, things of that nature, uh, your JavaScript and CSS. Uh, so, and you can see us using those wild cards here to pre-populate our meta description and title. Uh, here we have an HTML header for the top of the page, so we can brand our reports, and the HTML footer for the bottom of the page. So I'll go back to search. Uh, since all of this looks pretty good, we'll go ahead and say get data. And now it's going and uh, collecting all of the uh, top 100 results. 
And then after that, it'll start analyzing up to 555 factors on those 100 web pages. And then it'll produce our report. And you'll see that the software uh, measures the factors and batches. Uh, this is basically to not overwhelm CPUs of uh, slower, cheaper computers. Uh, so not all systems are equal, and people on the lower half of the spectrum were having their CPUs be totally swamped by Cora. The main consideration for Cora is CPU, so number of cores and the CPU speed uh, should be your primary concern. It's highly threaded. And now we can see the report is created. We have our branded header from before. So you saw that up here in the HTML header tab. Uh, we have our data starting here. So the SEO roadmap and the date, uh, the target keyword, our track domain, where it was ranked. And these are links. This is a link to the search. This is a link to our ranking page. Um, and then, of course, we have some documentation on the side here. So we tell you about how to use the report. Uh, we give you the exact match. And over here, you'll see in the factors, it says variations in the HTML tag. And you might ask, well, what are variations? Over here on the side, we have it documented. Variations are the words that Google makes bold in the desktop search results. Google bolts them to show you how relevant the results are. We measure them because they help make your page relevant for the target keyword. And then we list all of those keyword variations. And the number beside each one is how many of our selected competitors are using that variation on page. So we can see that DUI is on all 10, but Los Angeles criminal defense attorney is only on three. So. Uh, we would ideally want to use most, if not all, of these to increase our relevance. Um, likewise, you'll see entities and sentences. You may ask, what are entities? So you scroll down to that section. Entities are nouns that Google's AI likely understands. They are found in public databases like Freebase, Wikidata, Wikipedia. Uh, groups of entities form topics, which helps classify documents. And then we list the entities that we are detecting. And again, we give you the count of how many competitors from your checked list are using each entity. Uh, same thing with LSI words. We list them out and they're below. Uh, we define leading matches and making whole tags. And these are also hot links. So you may say variations and address tags. What's an address tag? Uh, whenever it's uh, linked, you can click it, and that will uh, open up in a new browser the documentation. And then down below, we have our competitive comparison. So this is the raw measurement data and the correlation data. So we have each factor again, and they're also linkable. We have our track domain here in the yellow column, and you can click to that page by clicking the, the header. We have the average measurement among our competitors and the maximum measurement among our competitors. And then we have our competitors listed here. So if you choose competitors 2, 4, 6, 8, then these will be numbered 2, 4, 6, 8, and these link to those pages. So if you need to investigate outliers, just click the column header to go investigate the outlier. So if we say, wow, this guy has 1,631 variations in div tags, we can click here, view source, and see what they're doing with div tags. So that's how that works. And the uh, correlation column, this is a best of both for Spearman's and Pearson's. Uh, across the whole result set. We give the critical value, so you need it to be 0.2 to be 
uh, significant in this case. And so the significant correlations are all green and the insignificant ones are all gray. And we exclude the uh, negative factors because those are typically data anomalies. There are very few negative SEO factors. Most of the time they're anomalies or problems with data. So we just exclude the negative factors. Um, in the search result uh, snapshot, this is just uh, the search results from the moment the report was created. So you have a snapshot of what it looked like. And this is useful for seeing are there exact match domains, there's their sentiment in the title tags, are there leading matches in titles. Uh, you can investigate the URLs to find out, you know, are they using home pages, inside pages, category pages, product pages, things of that nature. So there's a lot of useful information of being able to look at the snapshot. So this is uh, the mode in single mode, and when we uh, use it in the other mode, all results, what will end up happening is we will get a folder that is a dated folder, and in that folder uh, we will have your keyword uh, is another folder, so you'll get a keyword folder by date. And then when you go into that folder, you get an HTML report for every website in the search results. So when we go and find one, let's do, uh, you can see uh, that we have the report here. And again, you can link to these, so if you're like, has an AMP link tag, what's AMP? Click it, takes you to the AMP documentation page. If you say, uh, what's a schema answer? Click it, takes you to the schema.org page for the answer. So all of these links take you to the zone on the page. They won't tell you what a variation is. You need the content on the side for that. But if you need to know what a label tag is, since that's the zone on the page, it will take you to that documentation. And then uh, these reports, you can host them and uh, do uh, passive outreach. You can print them out, take them in hand when you walk in the door. You can email. Uh, to contact people, say, you know, here's some information, we'd love to help you map these out. When using these reports, keep in mind we're telling you for each factor, to be above average, you need to add this amount more of that factor. And to take the lead, you need to use this amount. And that's how the reports work. It's as simple as that. So it will be variations, so we, these are our variations, we need 280 one more in div tags to be above average. That's based on the competitors we've chosen. And that's how it works. Thank you.